We're live, man. We are live. Yes, we back are again. Another week. Another week, episode seven. We're here. The Social Living Podcast. Um, yeah, man. I guess we can just dive into what episode seven, man. Number seven. Yeah, man, what, 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 what does what does what does number seven mean to you, man? What do you think? What do you think of again, it? Think? Again, seven. football. Seven. <laughs> comes. And it, and it's, this is such a random one as well. First, when you said seven men, I thought Thomas Rosiski. Why? Oh, really? Yeah, why am I thinking Thomas Rosiski? But you know, yeah, that, that pops in my head. You know what? I'm an, error beh- I'm, a, I'm an error behind that one, you know. And I thought seven, I thought Robert Pirates. So I was like, yo. Okay. okay yeah, you know what I mean? He, he, he was the one before Rosiski. And like, yeah, man, set that bar for that, 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 that goal scoring midfielder. And I feel like since that era, in terms of Arsenal fans anyway, we just haven't, we've never had a player like Perez ever again. Just someone um, like that. I guess you can argue maybe Sanchez, but like, you know, just in that 4 4 2 system, someone who can play on the, on the left wing, right footed, uh, and just get you like 15 goals a season. Mm. Just pure class, man. No, nah, man, you can't, you can't compare, man. Um, yeah, Perez. But you know what? Out, outside of Arsenal, I, I, I think it is. It's just Ronaldo, maybe Beckham. Beckham, yeah, that comes to my head. Ronaldo or Beckham. But yeah, man. Compare. There's, there, there's no one else. You could say Frank Ribery or something like that. But really and truly, it's, it's, um, it's a hundred percent Beckham and then Ronaldo. And um, I guess we we can just segue that straight into Ronaldo, man. Like, yeah, man. Bro, Big last he's, of... he's home. <laughs> yeah, man. Like we 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 saw we saw Messi two weeks prior go to PSG. Then we saw Lukaku go to Chelsea, and now we're seeing Ronaldo go back to Man United. Like oh, that is oh that is a that is a big that is a that is a big thing. But Does it scare I guess it, it, it doesn't it scare me. It doesn't scare me simply because me being an Arsenal fan, we're not gonna compete against Man United, so yeah, I can't I be scared. I can't, yeah, I can't be scared of that. So that's not um, that's not me. Um, but I think the question that comes to mind is, can he do it in the Premiership again? Mm, at his age. At his at age, his you know. Age. Who 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 was the last person to do it at thirty six years old? Mm. Uh, in the but then, if anyone's yeah. gonna do it, it's gonna be Ronaldo. Exactly, exactly. And He's like, done it everywhere else. So you can, I feel like mm. you can only back him and and expect that that level to to come through in a prem again. Hundred percent. That's why you give him. That's why you give him four hundred eighty k a week. Mm. Yeah, man. Which it's is not shabby, man. man. Not shabby, on, not shabby. Yeah, someone of his age as well to still be getting paid that amount. Exactly. Yeah, man. He deserves every penny of it, man. Like how many Champions Leagues he's won, the amount of trophies he's won is 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 more than most like clubs' history. So no, you know yeah. that speaks for it's itself. Crazy, man. It speaks for itself. Um not sure if you saw as well in the week. So the day that it got announced that um, he signed. I believe that Man United's share price actually went up by almost ten percent. I think it was like nine point eight percent. So like mm-hmm. almost ten yeah, percent so increase. That is that is crazy. Yeah, um, that's the Ronaldo effect. The Ronaldo exactly. effect shows the power and the aura and the, the influence the man has. Mm. Mm. So it's, and even for the Premier League, man, I bet Sky are rubbing their hands. Sky BT and whoever's got the um. Got got the viewings, but um, yeah, but they're rubbing their hands because everyone's gonna see what Ronaldo's doing in the Prem. Yeah, and it, again, it kind of confirms again the English Super League. It's basically what it is, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. attracting another big player, big wages that we can afford. Um, they only signed him for what, like twenty, was it twenty five mil euros? Something I think like it was. That. So yeah, super cheap and um. Also, as you mentioned, the Ronaldo effect. Uh, Man, so the post that Man United did on IG, I believe the one that where they announced him, 
I believe that's the most liked social media post by a sports team to date. So, thirteen. Okay. Mi- last time I checked, it was thirteen million views. Um, thirteen million likes, which is oh, really more than yeah. more than Messi. Messi to PSG. More than Messi, man. <laughs> more than Messi. The worst thing is, you know, you know what it is when it comes to Ronaldo. He he's also like the poster boy. More so than Messi is. Like, if you're a football mm-hmm. fan, you know Messi. Yeah. But if you're if you're just a a regular person who don't watch football, you'll know who Ronaldo is just yeah, because yeah. of you know, like modeling and all that kind of stuff. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So um it's his brand. It's his, his, his brand is bigger than what Messi is. Exactly, strong. Um, you could probably compare it in terms of followers and stuff like that. So <laughs> man, it's big, man. It's big, it's big. Mm-hmm. So that's I guess that's one. One of the things that's happened this week, so we saw Ronaldo return to Man United. Another thing that happened on Sunday, Kanye West finally drops his album, uh, Donda. Um, I don't really have too much to say about that. Yeah, I've still not but, listened to it. You know, it's on my it's on my my um listening list. But um, yeah, we I guess we're looking at looking at the track. We were speaking about it the other day, but. Yeah, yeah. Just looking, looking at the track list alone kind of puts me off. Because I'm like, when am I gonna have the time to listen to the whole of this? A hundred percent. So that's how I feel. Like to be brutally honest, it's on my, it's on my listening list, but it's it's gonna come after after Drake's album. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm gonna listen to that first. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's just one of those. Like, I can't lie. I did try to listen to it. I tried to do it whilst I was like washing up. Um, first track, um, it just wasn't the mood, you know. Like you know, when you do the washing up, you're like, you need music that motivates you to like get the washing up done. You're just like, yeah, sing along and what. It, you know, it just wasn't that. Mm-hmm. So I guess I I chose the wrong mood that I was in to listen to that album. So I gotta give it another chance. And then again, just like what you said, twenty seven songs. I already lost, I kind of already lost interest because it seems like um, quantity over quality. So I'm just like, Mm -hmm. uh, do you know what I mean? Um, But then again, you could say that, but then I feel like if Drake did that, I would probably listen to all the songs just because I feel like it would, it will all go. (laughs) Do you know what I mean? Like it will, it will all kind of go like, it will fall like a playlist as opposed to, like an album. yeah, as an album, mm-hmm. like uh, I think was it Chris Brown? I think he's done stuff like that in the past, and I, I just, I'm just like, yeah, I can't. But if Drake did it, yeah, I'll listen to it just because I feel like he perfected it, and maybe it's a, it's a better listening experience. But mm-hmm. again, it, you, you, you all can probably tell that I'm just a Drake fan. So yeah. um, it'd be interesting to to sit, like to hear Kanye talk about the track list and why he's gone with so many songs because I know he yeah. wouldn't. I know there's thought thought behind it. Like with it, with everything Kanye does, it's not just a a random thing. Oh, I've made this many songs. That's how many songs going on the album. I wonder what this yeah. whole process was. Because mm. when it when it comes to creativity, that guy is untouched. It's unmatched. No one. Yeah. I don't think there's there's been an artist that has got to that level in terms of creativity and and excelling outside of outside of their their own remit and it, it, it again it's like it's it's good to see man because a lot of a lot of artists kind of just stay in their lane yeah but they yeah do. Is, he, he stepped out of that and he's forced his way into the fashion world and and it and you've seen like the likes of rihanna follow suit beyonce with mm. ivy park like it's, can they set set that trend man and it's, it's good to see no, it is, man. It is to see, like, outside of music, he's definitely been killing it. In and he 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 demands his respect as well. Like, yo, I am a billionaire. Forbes, you better go and check check my net worth. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, he demands yeah. that. Do you know what I mean? So he wants um, his flowers now. He, he wants, wants his flowers, flowers now, hundred percent. So you gotta give his ratings, and you know, I feel like um, with him being a creator, you can tell. When he has his like creative kind of like uh I guess not I don't want to say issues, but like his creative difficulties. You know, sometimes when you are a creator and you're just still trying to earn you want your art to be respected, you know. And he, he he's not taking no crap from Nike or Adidas or whoever it is. He is to himself that he sees, he is Walt Disney 
Do you know what I mean? He is Steve mm-hmm. Job. He is those guys. And he knows his worth and he carries that out. And that that in itself is inspirational. Do you know what I mean? Just that, us being able to witness that and see that and being able to see his journey to that point as well, it, 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 that can only give us hope and power. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And then there'll be many there'll be many more to come after him and he set that way, you know? So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, man, big props to him. Um, I guess the last question on that one as well is like, do you reckon that will be bigger than Drake's album coming out September 3rd? Certified no. Lover Boy. There's no way. This album, I've been waiting on it. It must be a year now I've been waiting for this album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone's waiting for it. Drake has mm. been pending in everyone's, everyone's um playlist for, for a minute now. And yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking to see what kind of Drake we get. The title, the title screams soft ice cream mountain on the chest Drake. Like, <laughs> yeah no it definitely does and it definitely does and i love the artwork as well that he dropped as well with the pregnant women um i don't know if it's got anything to do with the album being nine months late or something or is it the ninth mm-hmm. month i don't know something like that like i feel like there's some play on there um mm-hmm. but uh yeah i'm definitely looking forward to it hopefully you know what drake always kind of hits my expectation when it comes to the album like late night drives that's what I need, and mm-hmm. he gets it every single time. So yeah, yeah. I'm looking Fitting forward as to well, going into the winter. Trust um, me, Drake. This is Drake season. He he owns yeah, this yeah. season. <laughs> he, yeah, he is. Autumn babies, OVO, yeah. all that stuff. Like yeah, man. This is October's very own. Mm. But no, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. But then yeah, going back to your question, I don't. Yeah, I don't think Kanye's will come. <laughs> come close to what Drake's going to release and I've not even heard it it's just I but, think yeah I just think Kanye is a, he, he appeals to a quite a niche crowd in terms of what he produced musically mm. um, and yeah Drake's more it's more general compared to Kanye but um, yeah, in terms of my vibe I think yeah I'm more I'm more leaning towards Drake than Kanye but um, yeah some of Kanye's old projects are yeah, unbelievable yeah uh, yeah Again, creatively, when I think of Kanye, I think the first one that comes to my head is actually Runaway. You know, um, the music video where he's on the piano. And it's like, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, just the creativity of that video and the song I learned. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's, un, it's unmatched. But yeah, and at this moment in time, it's Drake for me. Yeah, I feel like, you know what, Drake, Drake's like, Drake's album for me, I know for a, a fact it will be way better than than, uh, than Kanye's, for sure. Um, just for the simple fact of my own preference, that's number one. But also, I feel like there's 100% going to be a viral, something will go viral, you know what I mean? Like, whether it be a dance, whether it be like something like Hotline Bling or something, do you know what I mean? Like, there's going to be something that will be, go viral from his album. Um, just because I feel like he's always had that kind of ingredient within his music and his production or videos and things like that. So, um, yeah, there'll always be, um, yeah, there'll always be something like that that will kind of create that separate him from Kanye. I think, you know, he got Kanye's already done the build up. He's already done the whole Mercedes Arena and stuff like that. But I feel like I don't think that will carry on over the weeks. Where I feel like Drake will probably stick over the next like, couple months, you know? So, yeah, man. It'll be good, man. Looking out for that one. Looking out for that one. Um, I guess, um, yeah, I guess the next the next thing that also happened this week, so in football, we had the transfer deadline. We had a lot of footballers moving left and right. Um, but one footballer in particular started using his social media in a different way that we've probably never even seen before. So I just thought we like just touch on this before we kind of get to the main, the main subject. You know, the the top three accounts that um, we think are really important on on Instagram. Um, so yeah, that, let's touch on it. So Arsenal player uh, Ainsley Maitland Niles randomly, I feel, starts sending shots at Arsenal via social media. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's, it's crazy. He basically said that I just want to go where um, I'm going to play. Uh, mm-hmm. Obviously, right now, he hasn't been playing 
if you do follow football, so the situation is Maitland Niles has not been playing football with Arsenal. Well, he, he's just not a first team regular. He uh, plays predominantly as a, a centre back, a centre mid, sorry, centre midfield. But when Arsenal use him, they normally use him as a right back. Um, he doesn't like playing there, but he's probably played most of his adult career, adult playing career, in that position. Um, and he's really good at it. Um, mm-hmm. So from the outside looking in, it kind of feels like there might be a bit of an attitude issue there with um, Maitland Niles. I think the I think Arsenal actually need Maitland Niles, um, but yeah. until he until he gets his attitude right, I feel like it, it probably won't work out. And the more he wants to play centre mid, um, the more I guess he's gonna run into these types of issues. I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's a, he's at a turning point in his career now. He needs to make a decision about where he wants to play, because I think even at West Brom they wanted to and they ended up wanting him to play right back. I feel like he he just needs to to give in and realize that that, that is his best position. Because as an yeah. Arsenal fan, I've seen I've seen him come through the ranks, and when I've watched him in, in midfield, I've never felt comfortable. Yeah, with him there just because of his um, casual approach. And I know sometimes it works and it works for the better thing, but I've just seen him get caught on the ball quite a few times. And, it's, and, and yeah, he just seems more comfortable at right back in terms of his energy, um, the way he can take on a man and, and his decision making and his final ball is not too bad as well. But um, yeah, yeah it would be interesting to see what, where, what, what happens with him at Arsenal now. Because, yeah, I don't know how Arteta, Arteta is quite a stern man. I don't know how he deals with this going forward. I saw rumours about him him having to train with the youth team now. But, yeah, it'll be, again, it'll be interesting to see how, how he fits back into the side after that little outburst on, on IG stories. Yeah, it's true. I, and, and, you know, like, in addition to basically what you just said as well, like, he's also, like, as much as, like, he looks good in that right-back position and, you know, you named all those attributes, he's also just better at right-back than the other right-backs that we have. Um, <laughs> yeah, and it's like you know, it kind of puts it into a weird situation because if he just was like, you know what, I'll play right back, he would probably play every week if he just showed that uh-huh. maybe that enthusiasm and took responsibility. Uh, I obviously I don't know Maitland now, right? So I don't know him personally, but the vibe I'm getting, he seems like the type of person that if he makes a mistake at right back, he'll be like, well, I'm not a right back. And I feel yeah, like that's the that wrong attitude to take. Yeah, I feel like that's the wrong kind of attitude. It's more so like, okay, I'm not a right back, but um, I can do this better and I'm going to improve. Do you see uh-huh. what I'm saying? And it's like, okay, that's my responsibility. That was my fault. So it's like, yeah, and then you, you, once you focus in that direction, you can do it. But you've seen players, other players do that. Like uh, Ashley Young went into right back. Uh, uh-huh. Antonio Valencia. These are all forward Valencia. players. Yeah. Yeah, Valencia is a great shout because he he turned into a real solid right back. I remember him at Wigan, used to bomb down yeah. the right hand side. I never never yeah. saw any defensive discipline in him. Then he made yeah. the move, made the move to United, and all of a sudden he's one of the best right backs in the league. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, and I feel crazy. like yeah, go on. Yeah, I was saying like these are just case studies for me and now just to see Ooh. how how you can transition into different different positions. And still have a good career from it, but yeah, it, 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 and it also, it also, it's also about the team around him, who is influencing Maitland now. Like, if if he's got an agency, are they are they backing his decision? Are they are they advising him to to play the role mm-hmm. Arsenal want him to play in terms of furthering his career? Like, yeah, if his if his circle isn't advising him correctly, it won't it won't help him go further yeah. in his career. That's true, that's true, actually. Yeah. Yeah, man, I, I hope it works out for him, man. Um, like, I, I would have hated to have seen him go to, like, Everton on loan and he'd be wasted away there because he's not going to get into their centre mid... Like, he's not going to play in their midfield. Uh-huh. Uh, and, and and likewise, if he... um, If he ends up playing at right back and he starts killing it there as well, so... I guess we'll see, man. We'll see. We'll see where he goes from there. I think with Arteta, there's always a way back into the team, and it's just about kind of showing your, I guess, showing the the, the right attitude and making sure that you're 
for the team and not for yourself. And I feel like you'll find your way back into the team. So, yeah. Definitely, I think, I think. definitely. Yeah. But um yeah man let's dive let's dive into the into the actual topics man the, the the main the main the main topic that we have for the show today I think that's what everybody's looking forward to is finding out like what <laughs> what free accounts are we following on social media that we think are the probably the most influential on social media to ourselves I guess you know it's something that we follow like on a, on a, on a daily basis um I think I think we should start from bottom to top, you know, like yeah, uh, prioritize it. So, um, I'm happy to start with you know visualized value. I feel like I've only recently started following them, um, but their their content is absolutely amazing to me. Anyway, it's, I, I feel like it's amazing just for the fact that I'm a visual like learner and I like to take in things visually, and I feel like their minimalist approach to the, the, the graphic designs that they have, where it's just like, you know, like on a quotes page, they will have bare words to explain this, but they just mm-hmm. got a simple diagram. And I'm like, I like that. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's crazy. Yeah, really... yeah. They have like, it's such a minimalist approach. They have like a, a circle on a page, black and white, and their text would be like, life is never endless. And I'm like, wow, they've got yeah. me. <laughs> they've got me. But exactly. Yeah, it's, right. the, it's the impact. It's such a simple, simple um concept. But it's the impact it has. Is yeah, it's, it's it's a lot. But um, yeah, again, they're, they're a top account for me. It's something I I look out for. I look out for their um posts, and I know they do a lot of work with um Stephen Bartlett. Uh, yeah, like Navy that's well. all over the book. It's all over. Like if you haven't read Stephen Bartlett's book, there's a quick plug. Um, is it Happy Sexy Millionaire? Yeah, definitely check that out, man. Those graphics are in that book as well, and it just helps explain certain things that Stephen Bartlett kind of tries to portray in words. It helps. It kind of is a great like visual aid for what he's trying to say as well. It's just, it's, 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 it's yeah, it's brilliant, man. No, it's definitely, brilliant. definitely. Yeah, I would recommend dropping them a follow just for just for like daily motivation in a different way you've probably not seen before. Yeah, one hundred percent. Everything's in black and white. I believe the the actual graphic designer is called Jack Butcher. Um, okay. So, but visual visualized value. Uh, so it's at visualized value on Instagram. It's got about three hundred k followers at the moment. So if you haven't heard of it, you're definitely behind. But yeah, give them a follow. Um, and yeah, give Jack Butcher a follow as well. So he clearly has other projects and other designs that he does. But um, yeah, he's definitely a genius for that one. I just feel like it just simplifies everything. Um, and I, I've I've previously run quotes pages as well, and like when I look at his thing, I'm just like, yo, that 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 d- doesn't need any words. <laughs> it's like I, I yeah. get it, get it raised, you know what I mean? So um, yeah, just to just to kind of take that angle, take that niche, and grow with it as well. Just being consistent, posting, and the fact that people want to use that type of art in their books and stuff just shows how important the art that he's doing is creating is, you know. So, yeah, man, big up, big up visualized value for that one. Mm-hmm. That's yeah, account definitely. number one. That's account number one. And uh, the next one, I think I've got definitely got a lot more to say. Um, earn your leisure. Earn mm-hmm. your leisure on yeah, Instagram. Yeah, your boys. Your boys. yeah, my boys for sure, man. My boys for sure. So that's at Earn your leisure, um, or earn your leisure if you're in America. Um, so earn your, earn your leisure. Uh, their their account is basically about financial literacy. So um, I don't believe there's anything that's like that um, in the UK. If anything, mm-hmm. the closest, just an honourable mention, is the urban fin- is it the financier and yeah. uh, urban financier. Um, yeah. He's the probably the closest thing to earn your leisure at the moment, but earn your leisure like uh, urban financier is like a just a drop in the ocean when it compares to what earn your leisure's kind of online community is. If you see what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. it's about these two guys. Um, they're basically teaching financial literacy just amongst. They're teaching it online, 
and their target audience is clearly kind of like black people, but it's definitely for everyone. But it's for those who don't have access to this information, mainly. So they'll be teaching you about how to invest in stocks, how to invest in cryptocurrencies, how to invest in different businesses, like a wide range of businesses. So typically within the black culture, which obviously we fall under, like you might feel like when you're growing up, you're limited to like a, a handful of things that can make you rich or, or give you access to wealth. Uh, one of those things could be uh, a musician. Another one of those things could be, you know, an athlete. You might consider being a doctor or a lawyer, but if you're not, um, if you're not academically, if you don't feel academically able or even academically engaged, it's going to be really difficult for you to kind of reach those things. And I think with Earn Your Leisure, what they do is they give you another option. So they, I've seen them invest in like lorry companies, the companies where they're, you know, taking stock from one state to another state, or they're investing in like car rental businesses, cryptocurrencies, stocks, like all these different options where you can build out, like you can start creating your own asset portfolio and raise your network. And I think like just the way that they go about and do it, they look like me, they dress like me, and what they're talking about is so influential. So, like, mm, yeah, I guess they're that... important. They're important figures within the community. Like, like you said, it's that relatability, especially over in the UK. Like I said, Ur- the urban financier is probably the only person I've seen on a public scale talk mm-hmm. about wealth and net worth and how you can how you can build your your income. Um, but yeah, it's just that relatability is rare, and and we need to we need more of it. We need to see more of it. And it's that exposure. Yeah. It's that exposure to, to to things and and concepts that we don't have first hand knowledge to because of yeah. our backgrounds and and like uh, economic position. Like it's yes, yeah, again, like, I, I I I follow them but because I don't interact with them much, I don't see them come up on my time timeline. But yeah, yeah. I know this is, yeah, it's a re- recommendation from you. So I thought, yeah, I've got to give these guys a give these guys a chance. And what I have seen of them is, yeah, it's nothing but gems. Yeah, man, nothing but gems. And if you haven't checked them out, man, hundred percent check them out. They also got like interviews on on Breakfast Club as well. They also interview other rappers and like different entertainers and stuff like that, just to kind of talk about their certain adventures. So the likes of Jim Jones. And talking about how he launches, you know, some of his NFTs. We've spoken to like Fat Joe and his whole come up and how everything changed. Like once he like, so he was big, like obviously in the early two thousands, but then kind of like dropped off or slowed down, so to speak. And then like he's picked up again, like doing the podcasting, doing acting, and you know all these things. And like you get to kind of find out where he puts his money, how he holds his wealth. Um, just this past weekend, they did like a um, invest fest, like an investment festival type thing, okay. where they had like people like fabulous performing. Like it's just they've really tapped into like the hip hop culture and the urban culture um, right now, and it's like you know, and they're dropping real gems for just everybody to kind of kind of get their hand into this pie of like look. You don't need to go out and buy like a Balenciaga or buy a house or whatever. You can start off with just five pounds and learn how to trade off that, make money, buy crypto, what crypto platforms to use, like what um, investment platforms to use. They do like uh, uh, talks on Mondays where it's like they give like, I don't want to say signals, but it's just like the latest news of stocks and shares. And they just deliver it in a way that might be more understandable for you. So you might want to read the Financial Times, but they got so much technical jargons in there. You're just like, I don't know whether I should invest or not. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, okay, the way they drop it, it's just like in a way where I'm talking to you in my living room and I fully understand what you're saying to me. Um, and I think that's really important. And they're, and they're fully qualified as well. Like, <clears throat> Like they've been teaching this for years. This isn't just like a, a, a quick come up. They've been doing this for years and they've been trying to like push it out for, I guess, a long time, you know, within the community, going to schools, colleges, universities, whatever, you name it. They've been trying to do that. And um, you know what? Like they're, they're also a blueprint for like someone like myself, like trying to push out um, 
social media to like our communities that we have here that like we both um found a career within social media and i want that i want others within our community to know that that's also an option for themselves as well not they don't have to keep chasing whether it's like sports like you can do that but you also can have other skills outside of sports as well so okay. um yeah no i think that's really really i think that's just really important you know um for myself i follow them almost like every day i don't tap into every single podcast or show that they do but um there's always some sort of quote or gem or little like short video that i watch and i'm just like yeah they're for real like you know that i'm definitely going to take that on board um so i've definitely watched one of their shows and if anything it's motivated me to do the podcast to review um mm -hmm. uh even launch like hashtag living agency um we've got more community things coming as well so Mem things that if you want to support us from the membership level and things like that and creating extra content for you guys so yeah like earn your leisure you're going to see a lot of what they talk about be like you're going to start seeing that coming into fruition with what we're what myself and Jamal are doing um mm -hmm. in the months to come so yeah man again just big 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 so yeah man I don't know. I, I feel like I got. I feel like I run out of words when I got to say what I got. When I'm like so passionate about something, but yeah, yeah no, it cool. shows though, man. It shows the impact they've had on had on you. Yeah, yeah. If if they can influence you to to start your own agency and and look at more looking at what you're doing in the community, it can do it for others as well. So that's nah, good. So it's good what they're doing. Yeah, man. Passing the baton. Passing the baton. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And I guess I guess we can start to again for me one of one of the accounts that I okay there's two people so within the, within the, my my industry is fashion all about fashion to start my own clothes my own trainer brand um, which I no longer do but what inf one guy that did influence me to start the brand was Reese Wabara who owns um, Nia Dubois. So he, the backstory for Reese is he was a young pro at Man City. Um, it didn't work for, work out for him there. He ended up going around a few of the championship clubs. But whilst he was um within, I think it might be when he was a youth team at Man City actually, he started his own clothing brand called Manuel de Voix, which um it initially kind of just popped up within the football industry. There was a lot of young footballers wearing it, and then it it kind of worked its way into more of a I guess a global market, they can say now. Because they, yeah, they, yeah. they do shit globally. But yeah, just his story and the growth of the brand over the last, I want to say six or seven years is is crazy. I saw recently this, I think last month alone, he his net income was, I might be like 4.2 mil, which just shows like the level he's on at the moment. Um, yeah. But yeah, he, he, he's one guy. And then there's another guy that I also follow called George Heaton, who is one of the Heaton brothers that own a brand called Represent. Wait, um, wait, 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 wait. We can't just, we can't just quickly just brush past Reese Wabara like that. There's more. I know. There's, I mean, definitely, I was gonna, <laughs> there's more to say. I'm going to compare the two. And then I was going to say why, why Reese was, why, why Reese is my pick, basically. All right. Okay, yeah, um, go on, go on. yeah. So yeah, again, like just to come, just to compare to two, because it was a tough choice who I who I had to the list was between Reese and and George. But um, yeah, just giving a quick overview of Reese and then onto George Heaton. Um, and just why why he's one of my why he would have been one of my picks is simply because of the transparency he shows on social. And I think if I was to run at a brand at scale, it would I just follow his blueprint in terms of how active he is on social, how active he is in his community, um, the feedback he gets from social, he then applies it into his work and it affects the decision-making when it comes to product, materials, feel and fit. Um, the brand he's created, again, last 10 years, he released a book. I was going to buy it and I saw it was £500 and I had to itch my head. <laughs> but um, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, the story is crazy. Um, the, the the clothing as well is it's it's quite an it's quite an American American feel in terms of that boxy fit, but it's 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 what it's, it's what's in fashion now, and that's where I think they've seen their growth over the last few years as that oversized boxy fit has come in fashion. They've mm -hmm. just they've just grown as that trend's grown, but yeah, in terms of quality, there yeah, it's unmatched. The price point is slightly higher, but 
for what what you're getting for that price point is a better quality product that will, that will last you longer. But um, yeah, again, to cut when comparing it to for me, it's Reese Wabara, and I think it's for me, it is it's simply his story, and how relatable it is being being a young pro myself, finding something outside of football that you can kind of focus on is it it's not easy. It's not easy, and I can imagine he got a lot of scrutiny for it in his early days. Um, a lot of managers would probably would have told him just to focus on football, or when his career wasn't going well, that the the, the business was probably an excuse for why it might not have gone well. And he made he made the decision to step away from the game eventually and focus on a business. And I bet, yeah, he, I bet he's not looked back because the the growth, the product, the this how how. How he scaled the business is 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 being crazy. It's on the similar lines of 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 Gymshark. But, um, yeah, I know I know he's been a guy you've had your eyes on as well, Jules. Like how how, yeah, has he, how has he impacted you, and what have you what have you liked from him? I think for me, like obviously the the you 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 were the one who kind of introduced me to him, to be honest. And then like I kind of gave him a follow, and then like what he was putting up on his stories, it was just so impactful. Like it was just like. It, it, you know, it just felt like we were both in the same headspace. Like, some of the mm-hmm. quotes that he would put up sometimes were, like, quotes from Think, Think and Grow Rich, and I was like, oh, I'm reading that book right now. And it's like, yo, yeah, that, mm-hmm. that, that, you know, the little things like that that I could just super relate to. And again, I, one thing that I really did like was the transparency in his story. So he would be talking about how much he maybe spent on, like, Facebook advertising. And then mm-hmm. this is the return that he got you know, and super open to it. He's always, like, used to post about, like, his trips from, his, he's based in Manchester, so he, he's always travelling down to London for work and stuff like that. You see his house, his cars, and things like that. Like, all those types of things are, like, super, super duper uh, mo- motivational. And I just, like, straight away, I just clicked. And then, um, like, you touched on his ebook. So he had an ebook which kind of just, like, has is like a blueprint for Facebook advertising at the time. Um, I think it was going for a thousand pounds, no? And then, and then you told me to buy, it and I think it was like fifty percent off. Um, mm. And then it was something like five hundred pounds. So yeah, it was some, it was something like that again. But again, it's like he knows his worth. He knows that mm-hmm. this blueprint is what made him that twenty million pounds one year or whatever it was. So you know, something like that I can really get behind. Again, young guy played football, sporting background, just like the both of us have had. Uh, found something else outside of football that he was that he was more passionate about, and that he probably saw more longevity in as opposed to mm-hmm. football. Like your career can finish at any time, you know it can finish. You know, thirty. Let's say you know you start kind of going on the wind down. So he thought, you know, what well, I could grow this more and kind of earn more and have, you know, like this this will be me. Do you know what I mean? So he stopped his career early and just focused on Monet Devoir. And I think he can never he bet on himself. And yeah, no, definitely. there's no regrets when it when you bet on yourself. There's no regrets, man. No regrets mm-hmm. at all. You put yourself out there, and you wanted to see what you could get back, and and he's reaping the rewards of those of the benefits there. Yeah. So, um, yeah, man. Big shout out to Reese Rabara. So, yeah. For you. me, I just want to add. Yeah. Again, for mm-hmm. me with Reese, it was that change in mentality in terms of opening my mind on up to uh, different different possibilities in terms of what I could do outside of football how how to learn how to educate yourself maybe outside of university it was just a different approach that I probably yeah. never considered whilst playing football he got, yeah, me yeah, into yeah. Read, he got me into reading and the books he was reading was the books I started reading like slowly I started to to use him as a as a blueprint and so how I wanted to live my life and ultimately it made it made my life better because I felt more focused I felt more confident with my my decision making and with what I wanted to do because I've yeah. seen that he's that he's done it um yeah. before me so yeah again these guys like we again we can talk about these guys forever because they they have impacted what we do now and what we will do in the future but yeah again yeah. he's another another guy another guy to follow 100%, 100%, and like there's there's so many other honourable mentions that I could I could throw out there. Um, I oh, think... the Benj- Mr. Benjamin as well, our oh, Benjo. 
He's got, yeah, yeah Benja. He's got honorable, honorable, honorable shout out because again, his to what I like about him as well. He's 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 from the hood, and he's yeah. he's he's his personality has stayed throughout. Like I can imagine a lot of people from his background would end up evolving and maybe changing themselves to suit the, the corporate world, the business world. But yeah. he he has grown his business by being the guy he is, which is incredible to to stay true to himself and still grow the business from such a grass it was such a grassroots business. I think it was he talks about like he started off with a hundred pounds in a dream and yeah and, and the rest is history. But, but the thing is you 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 the verse the what I like about him is like again it's it's probably the same thing with everyone that we're probably going to be talking about is it's the journey. It's that journey in the stories, right? So like you, I remember you telling me that early on you bought like a wallet or something from Benja, you didn't quite get it, you asked for like a refund or something like that. But mm -hmm. it was like that was part of his jet, like that was the journey for you. You connected with him then, and mm -hmm. then to see where it got to now, you're gonna be like, yo, like that's it's possible. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you know, like, I, I can think about that. Like, I forgot about the the wallet. Yeah, I was <laughs> buying the wallet and it didn't come. It was like two months later, it's still not come. So I tried to contact the customer services, no reply. But this is early on in the days, early on in, yeah, his, um, yeah, yeah. in the business. But then yeah, two yeah, years yeah. later, I've got I've got five tracksuits of his. <laughs> yeah, it shows, yeah, yeah, yeah. It shows the growth. Yeah. The growth man, but again, there's stories like this that help you because in the early days, I probably, you can probably relate. It feels it is tough. And you, mm. and you probably question if you're making the right question if you're making the right decision. But seeing the stories and seeing that they've they've overcome like the instant hurt these like early teething problems and the hurdles early on to 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 build a sustainable business is, is what keeps keeps you going. Yeah, man. And he, he, you know, I, I followed him on um on Snapchat for a long time. I think it was back, I remember it was like when I was in Jamaica, twenty seventeen. Oh, it's been four years. Wow. Um, but yeah, four years ago, I was following on Snapchat. Uh, while I was in Jamaica at the time, I was like just watching his snaps, and he I, he used to do a lot of like inspirational, like not quotes. It was like stories, like just talking about certain things. And I was just like, yo, I was blown away because I don't even know where I don't even know how I even came across his account. It probably was from you, but um, the transparency he would give, like. You would see on his Snapchat, he's like, oh, damn, like the, the owners of the warehouse have just sold the warehouse to another company. I got to find a new warehouse or something like that. And like, mm -hmm. he gives you first hand transparency into how he's making some of his decisions and he's, you know, how he's got to think critically to, you know, get his stock from one place to another place. And like, these are just like, one of a few problems that he might face on a daily basis, weekly basis, monthly basis. And like, it just gives you a good insight into what it's like being a business owner. Cause I don't think everybody's cut out for it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but if you're yeah. very much like solution based, I feel like it's probably what it might be something that you want to go for. But like just watching it's him not, and me yeah. Feel like, yeah, this is me. But yeah, go on. It's, not, it's not it's not glamorous at all. Again, I keep adding to the list, but as as we're speaking, people keep coming to my mind. Daniel Astro. Yeah. How did I forget? I don't know how I forgot Daniel Astro. Ah, again, yes. Yeah, hearing his, yeah. his story. I'm not going to talk too much. All I'm going to say is watch, search YouTube, search A Day in the Life of a Construction Owner. Uh, yeah. Daniel Astro. Yeah. And just, just, yeah. Watch, just watch the video and and yeah, you'll you understand why there's why we hype about him so much. Yeah, man. So big, big, up, big up Daniel Astro. I know he uses stereo as well, so big him up. Bring up Yanomize as well. These are big accounts, but I think we got to talk about the biggest account that we probably follow the most. Gives us the, mm. gives us the most news within the industry. All different mm. things, whether it's like football, whether it's sport, like, whether it's like music, art, like gems. Everybody that we've just been talking about, they share mm. on their platform. And yeah, it's um, like all in, in all in one page. Like you get everything you need. From the world, you, know you could literally just follow them and not follow they anyone should... else. Do you know what? We should just call them the encyclopedia. They literally, mm. they just that's what they should be. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Literally. And like, even when I click on their page, right, there's so much content on there that I don't even realize. I, 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 I miss that. I miss that mm. because of the algorithm. But like, yeah, man, that, that number one account that I feel like has influenced us a lot or the most 
and that everyone should really follow is Made You Think. Uh, mm -hmm. Made You Think, again, UK guys, um, the guy who runs it is very much like from the hood. Mm. He's found his opportunity. He talks. I like the way they like they talk on the page as well. He tries to be as honest as possible. Always in the mm. comment. Celebrities are always in the comments. Rappers, everyone's always in the comments. Comments is where it goes off. They're having mm. the discussions. And and you know what it is as well? It's not just dumb discussions about like, you know, just things that don't mean anything. Sometimes yeah. it's about things that, you know, like financial literacy. You know, what would you do mm. if you had a credit card or whatever? Do you know what I mean? Or Yeah. And what I like wrong um, is, is stuff that goes on within our community. Like, yeah. he, like a, a, a common theme is black women and thoughts, opinions, um, stories around black women and how they're treated and how, how men look at black women or whatever, whatever. But that, yeah. just that, that open dialogue in his comments is important for, for the community. Because it allows yeah, yeah. various different opinions to interact with each other, get feedback, rare, 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 and change, and hopefully change perception a bit more. But yeah, he's, again, it's important for the culture. And what I like again, like you said, the way he's the way he speaks, the way his page is is very raw and it's very it's very authentic, and it's not it's not what you when you think of social media, you don't really think um, a page of his would would do well because yeah. like, you look at the, if you look at the logo, for example. I can't even. Yeah. I couldn't tell you what the logo is, which is, yeah. which, is which is bad in in a way, but it it suits the page. Like yeah, the logo yeah, doesn't yeah. really appeal. I don't know what's on it, but it it works for him. The the, mm. the 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 handle is not. It might not be the cleanest looking hand um handle, but it works for him. And he's yeah. he's just stayed true to himself and built the team around him. And and it and it's worked. It's excelled like. <laughs> It's, it's it's good to see. It's good to see. But again, another important important figure within the community. Yeah, one hundred percent, man. I think what well, what's the handle again? It's made you think underscore. I believe it is. Yeah. Um, again, you said it all there, man. Like the logo and stuff doesn't necessarily stand out to me, but you know, it it, it does say. It, obviously, the the letters are like um, M Y T, which has made you think, but. Um, yeah, like it, I feel like things could be better, but it works for what the page is, and that's what everyone associates mm -hmm. it with. So it definitely does its jobs, you know, outside of my opinion of it. But um, like it's something I go to all the time when things are happening. Like even if like sometimes I might see earn you earn you earn your leisure content on made you think before I see it on earn your leisure. So it's like. And the same with like a Reese Robara pro. Like I know the day made you think posted about Reese Robara talking about the four point two million pounds that he earns. Um, I don't know if it was like the past month or whatever it was, but mm -hmm. like that transparency, they're offering that to the rest of the rest of the community, and it's like super, super, duper important. So um, yeah, man, big props to big props to, to made you think they've got a whole marketing team now they work with labels labels work with them to like um like help promote different artists and things like that and um yeah like they do so much and like to be able to be one man i think he he's he had some time in prison for him to be able to change his life around and use social media to help him mm -hmm. elevate himself into what he's done now and have a salary and pay other salaries and mm -hmm. and things like that like it's such an inspirational story so mm -hmm. yeah man made you think is number one we 100 percent got other honorable mentions that we've mentioned there reese robara um uh dan ashville yanamize there's also a guy called j um vsop who always just drops like uh certain gems he's similar to like earn your leisure but in a different way like he talks about things like universal credit how to get you know work in tax credit like things that are really important to our community that people might not even know about whether it be like you know how to earn 85 percent um percent back on your on your on your child care how to earn extra money by selling trainers he's very much into the trainer game um mm -hmm. but a lot of what he talks about is very simple stuff and it's probably more focused towards like parents, single parents, and maybe students. 
Um, so if you're looking for a way to make extra cash on the side, thirty pound, hundred pound a week, or whatever it is, like eBay, whatever. I know you went through a spell of like selling on eBay and uh, Gumtree and all those different types of things. And he just, he just, he just basically gives you gems on all those things. Uh, buying a house, working on your credit, how to earn points, next to points, Tesco club card points, all these things that like how you can use these things to just work it for your benefit. So yeah, big shout out to him as well. Wait, um, I need to I need to get this guy in again. I don't know how I missed him. He's, probably <laughs> been, he's been one of the biggest people to blow over the last twelve months throughout the pandemic okay. and so on. But Monia Chihuahua, I hope I said his last name right. Okay. Munya yeah, has, yeah. He's been. Do you know Munya? Yeah, yeah the, the comedian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, yeah. Again, his growth over the last eighteen months has been crazy, and the way he yeah. turns around content is unmatched. <laughs> yeah, Especially yeah. during the pandemic, Boris Johnson will come up with a statement two hours later. Munya's got a video there, you know, and, it, and, it's, you know, and it's blown up. You know what it is? His, you know, like his turnaround time is so unmatched. It's almost as if he's a psychic. Mm. You know what I'm saying? He, like, like, he knows it before it's coming. Like, he it's knows it's like, he's like, it's like he's already prepared it before it was coming. Like artists and need to get not... in their bag. Art, like mm. some rappers need to get in their bag because. When you're seeing certain people taking three days to to return a diss track or something yeah, like that, yeah, yeah. Munya is coming out with the parody. Like he's, his pen game is strong as well, and like, we can't even discredit that. Do you know what I mean? And his pen game mm. is strong with the with the the punch lines, with the the jokes. Like he, he like yeah, un- he, he doesn't miss, which is mad because his turnaround time is quick. So you expect yeah. things not to be funny or things not to be on point but each parody is on point which is yeah his work rate is 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 like you said unmatched but yeah we couldn't we couldn't go past past him because yeah, it's, yeah. It's, again and another important one for the culture because he he i reckon i reckon he got a lot of people through lockdown just in terms of the comedy he was bringing through for a tough time and the way he 100%. flipped the pandemic and flipped covid on its head um 100 yeah, percent there's even there's even guys like Mode Comedian, like mm-hmm. to me, there's so like many. So many. there's there's so many. I like that. Just a final word from Mo, just because like um just because like I've known him for quite a while. So it's like just to see his growth. Like I used to run around Camden, Shoreditch, do events. I used to ask Mo to to do um to like host them because he was he was like he was he was kind of like hood famous back then, mm. you know. So he wasn't like he wasn't mainstream, and it was hard to break into the mainstream then. Social media wasn't really around like that. I feel like the main was really, was really Twitter, but like it wasn't like as prominent as it is now. So we used to be able to book him at one hundred pounds, two hundred pounds, whatever, and then, and do that. And then to see him to where he's now doing like world tours, his own winning book, Baptist. his own winning Baftas. And they're like, win it, bro, it's winning BAFTAs. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's, a, it's mad. Own TV show. Um, he's got a book signing that he's doing, at, I don't know when, coming up. And like, it's all that stuff. Even the podcast, his podcasts are intellectual. Like, the conversations he has with like Young Philly, Poet, uh, Jeremy Lynch, uh, D Double, like, all these, like, these are some really important conversations that he's having as well mm. and like another thing that i like as well his stylist he's bringing in the, his boys like his stylist is, is like his boys like and he, he brings them all with him he started doing like house tours like it just shows you there's so many options there's so mm. many options i got one last name i got one last name <laughs> <laughs> our top our top three is turned into a top 10 but they will deserve man the, you know what the top three is just turned into a community and that just shows that's like that's what it needs for us to all elevate. And mm. the last one I'm gonna say is Patricia Bright. Like oh, yeah, epic, again, epic, again, important. epic, <laughs> epic, epic. Um, again, yeah, so, it's just the way she can, the way she. Can, I, I won't talk too much about her. But the, way she communic- <laughs> <laughs> the way she communicates her message is what is a way that can relate to the community. Because she's she takes the the corporate message, the the formal message about finance and and 
maybe from, from like the likes of Samuel Lees, maybe Grant Cardone and these these guys within like the property industry, and she yeah. relays it back to her community in a way that everyone can understand. Yeah, and again for, for for women as well, being a black woman, you don't you don't really see that. But I'm not going to talk too much because we've we 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 yeah we've gone over a lot of accounts. But again, it's very important, very important one to follow. Uh, yeah, I hope hopefully we don't like lose value in um in what we're trying to say. Um, I feel like maybe what we got to do in the future is maybe like make it a bigger list as as opposed to top three, we do top ten. Uh, mm. Uh, and we can go again but again like yeah there are a lot of accounts out there and you know what like I want to hear from our audience man I want to hear like if there are some names that we're missing you know I, we, we can meant that do honorable mentions in the next um in the next podcast next week so it'd be good to hear like what are some of the accounts that you guys follow like who who, who are you listening to who's influencing you who's been um really important in your life and some of the decisions that you make you know like there's there's so many artists and so many other people and they like could be dead or alive like for me but like i i i consume nipsey hustle's uh not music but like his content like he's still alive you know what i'm saying so it's like things like that like whoever it is man let us know in the comments man give us your top three accounts that you follow on Instagram that have that influenced you the most. Like, let us know, man. I want to hear about it. And uh, yeah, me and Jam will definitely get back to you guys in the in, in the in the comments and and um it'd be interesting to see like where you guys heads at and if it's similar to ours, you know? So that's from here. Yeah man. It's um I guess yeah that's it man. That's the end man. That's the that's the wrap. Do you know mm. what I mean? It's been, it's been a pleasure talking on this one. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, definitely very passionate about all the, the accounts that we've had. And um, I think we've given like a good analysis on on all the accounts. So, yeah, man, I guess until next time, man. Until next until time. Next time. Man. Yeah, yeah. We're yeah. Until next, until next week. Same time next week. Same time next week, 8 p.m. Uh, Wednesday, you know, follow us on all the socials. I go by the name of Julian Green and my co-host, Jamal Lawrence, and we're out, man.